saw. Snowball the lane, snowball the game, try and take over and just shut down that map if they can away from that Naga Siren. Yeah, I mean, they've got to they've got to do some like fast plays and just get a, a, quite a bit of an advantage, it feels like, in the early game. Or, yeah, it feels like they'll just get the out-farm thing, right? The Naga, the Doom, they'll just start to out-efficiency them all over the map. And, yeah, let's see how much the... Also, this I think the big one I'm going to be looking at is mid, right? Because we saw that immense disparity last game between XWY and Paparazzi. Not Paparazzi, he should win the lane. He should have a really good time. It's the Lena versus the Tiny, so... He should be able to at least make some rotations and actually set tempo for his team, which... I feel like last game, he actually just wasn't able to do anything. He was read like a book. Well, and if you watch back at XWY at the end of that last game, literally as we were going back to, you know, us standing there, uh, he had an enormous smile. Yeah. I haven't seen a player smiling that much after a game in a while. So uh, <laughs> definitely feeling himself. Gets to play the tiny again. And going to be going up against that Lena, like you mentioned, Paparazzi. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen it out of the mid. The last time it was here, it was Paparazzi that was like the be-all, end-all strongest player out of mid. And yep. hoping to get back towards a little bit of comfort. Yeah, and wondering what type of build we'll see also from the mid, because a lot of times when you see it mid, it's oh, more of the spellcaster build. Sneaky, so. sneaky. He got the Baron. Nice. Dude, that thing walked all the way around the whole map. Yeah, he started from bottom, wrapped behind the mid tier two, and actually found his way to the bounty. Good sneaky play. So three for XG. Uh, looking at starting items, Baboka. Starting Hedris with the Doom, so wanting to prevent that kind of harassment, I guess, from the Clockwork and Lone. Let's see how they do down here. What are they going to be able to make happen? And uh, again, the thing is we're getting some eeks out from Monet. Doesn't like that lane, apparently, uh, up top. We'll keep an eye on that one from JT. PYW, obviously, later on, can do a good job of dealing with those Naga Siren illusions and stopping the split push that can sometimes accelerate Monet's farm. Yep. The shard, definitely that 15-minute timing that he can look for to just, I mean, it increases your farm so much, but it also slows down the Naga. So that'll be nice for PWY. And JT, overall. We'll see how, I mean, we'll see if Timber's actually going to be good versus Nagasarn, because in theory, based off matchup, like it, sh it can be, but I just haven't seen the hero too much, and it just feels like a really tough one to make work now. And you know, what I'm wondering is if Lina just goes for kind of the same build that it, we've seen out of this hero, as Kate look at JT uh, having a pretty good time up here against Monet. Um, if that's just a very similar build, because he's already beaten away at this tiny, trying to take advantage of that low armor. If you just go right click, it could be pretty strong as. Q takes a lot of damage from Monet, getting those trees torn down, and then has to back out from there. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering the same thing, which build Paparazzi is going to go for this time. Since they do have that Lone Druid for like that right click, maybe he does look for more spell casting, but also the mail you can see the argument for just the like Falcon Blade Maelstrom kind of build anyway, since he's playing versus Naga Sarn. So yeah, we'll see what he opts for. Why pops Battery Assault. Going to be forced back by Bulbka. And Ghost playing on the Lone Druid. Uh, another one of those heroes that we haven't seen all the time uh, in terms of these pro games, but uh, does have sort of a unique style of play that could he could potentially take advantage of here. Try and just bully down these lanes before Aster can even come online. Yeah, bully down those towers, which at some point, I mean, you can look at Aster's draft, and they do have some limited ways of actually setting up and defending towers with, like, deep push, as we call it, right? Those, like, long-range nukes. They only really have the Rubik, the Fade Bolt, to slow down those pushes unless they bring numbers and just go for any type of jump. So, yeah, maybe we could see this Lone Druid setting some uh, tower-pushing tempo. But right now, he's struggling. He's got five last hits down bottom. Yeah, he's not having a good time. No. That is not what they are hoping for. I think the constant, a couple fade bolts hitting both him and his hero uh, and his bear were actually really limiting him from getting last hits. And DY trying to push back that Rubik at this point. But XXS perfectly content at this point, uh, playing on this Doom. Already has seven armor at Ring of Protection going, and also Swiftness Aura can get in there if things get a little bit tough. He's going to be real farmed on this Doom. He might even, I mean, PYW. Oh, PYW. Ooh, I don't know. It looked like he might have caught a chain lightning or something there from one of those creeps. Yeah, it looked like it too. I thought I saw the same thing. Yeah, no, it, it did not use mana actually. I thought it's a, I thought the same thing, but. W. It's away at him. Yeah. Was able to survive through the first salvo, and now instead, it's maybe gonna be the disruptor going down. Oh. It's a big whirl in death, and it's enough for the kill. JT draws first blood. Ooh, five trees right there. A nice little bonus, 55 pure damage. Nicely done from JT. Good job from PYW really baiting him. And let's see, does PYW just suicide? It's like, I do not want to stay up here. I do not no. want to walk back to base. Yeah, he's just going to give it up. So talk to me about what it is that makes oh. Timber. Wait, did he get involved? No, no, he got. I actually think he got the XP. Take the fight recap and we can see if he got XP or I mean, not. Yeah. He did. Yeah. 
No, no, he, no he, he didn't. Did not, no. He didn't. That I, was the I other thought one. He actually was pretty <laughs> close to the range of it, though. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, either way. Um, so t tell me what it is that's so rough about Timber nowadays, because it seems so far in the lane as if he's perfectly fine. Lane things, I think, is okay. It's just in mid-game now, building up your reactive is... How, how do you... 40 stacks, you know? It's, it can sometimes... You can just run into these fights nice. where you have, like... Sorry, the, the, we Yeah, I just saw the fight recap, yeah. Uh, you just... You can't build up your stacks, you get squishy, and there's just... At some point, you're, you're not as tanky as you used to be. You know, you used to, like, show up and you're invulnerable, but now it's just not the case. So it's mainly the reactive armor and getting whittled away really quickly by uh, all, or just dying before he's able to get the armor up. Yeah, and they've, they've also nerfed all of his spells, right? Over time, they have been constantly nerfing how much damage and mana cost, et cetera, and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm looking forward to see if we can learn from it and what we can actually get. Because I do see some players still playing it. I know Whisper, one of the big Timbersaw players that people really love, the Kai Assange build, he does it a lot. And he does make it look good, but I don't really see too many other players. And not any pro games I've really seen it, so. Well, that's uh, something to watch for later. And of course, as Kazu in the panel was talking about, uh, against the Naga Siren, against the Tiny, it's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but particularly these supports, the Rubik, the Disruptor, they can mess it up. And in the later mid game, you're going to just see him maybe get doomed. Yeah, that as well. JT trade some damage there with Monet. Down bottom, double stun with the rotation coming from PYW. Can they get any roots from Ghost? Wants to chase him down, but the battery assault. The right click comes through. Ghost takes down Bobica. Nice move from PYW. That is the one thing about. Oh, Boss wait back. for a second. Paparazzi. He's in some trouble. They have Glimpse ready. Pulls him right on in. XWY, does he have the damage? PYW there. They don't quite get away. PQ, the one that picks up the kill. Nice move. From the Disruptors, I think he's starting to recognize also on Disruptor that it's now like this 1v1 matchup, uh, JT versus the Naga. Then that's where we, what I was saying, like this is the nice thing about Timber, you can leave him alone in some of these lane matchups. That's where it's going to allow Lion, PYW to make moves. But looking at the double check of the runes again, Aster always Dyer's emphasizing this when they have Tiny. And will find themselves a tasty little lion. Throws out the Earth Spike. Paparazzi moves in. DY right on top. XWY in some trouble there, but gets the toss away. And PYW walks up to high ground. Another Earth Spike in a second. Does he connect? He does. There's an avalanche. Just barely able to follow up onto him, but XWY a little bit too quick for him. 330 movement speed gets him away and maybe DY might even. get him. Find something here. Does he have a toss away again? He does. PYW won't get caught, but Ghost, you're in the pain train now. So the gank goes from mid all the way down bottom, and they deliver a kill. All right. Works out, though, for sure for Extreme. And now top, it's JT level 6. Now he can actually, he can probably just push Monet out of this lane. Yeah, not easy. Obviously, Naga Siren depending a lot on that armor to keep her survivable in the laning stage. Chakram does not care about that one bit. Things looking infinitely better, of course, for XG this game. They even have a huge push coming in mid lane right now, too. But Boca, he'll take the wave, though. Fade Bolt, easy yep. peasy. But yeah, looking at Ghost, he's having a pretty damn good time. Everything is recovered after that little bit of a weird start. And ooh, up top, actually. Except you, why? He's making the movie. He sees JT low. Can they bring him down? Has stick charges, tries to survive. Chakram gets away. 20 HP. Oh, a couple more hits, but 24 reactive armor stacks. That keeps JT alive. That is exactly what they needed there from him. Oh, the dream. XWY now. He's the one getting slowed down this time around since he's versus that tough Lena matchup, and now a failed rotation is going to slow him down even more. And we think about the things that were really problematic for Extreme Gaming last game. Paparazzi not having a laning stage. Mm -hmm. Not the case this time. Also, the like shutdown of the map. They haven't been able to do that with a Brood, and it doesn't look like Naga's going to be able to force out the Timber anytime soon. So everything looking a lot better for Extreme. Yeah. They don't really have great ways to push towers at all on the side of Aster until way later on. SWI caught there for a second, moves in, the clock surrounded, four heroes, but the Earth Spike connects. Do they have enough damage? They lift, they try and force them away, but they won't stop the pain train coming from Paparazzi. Bobica slowed for the moment, steals the Dragon Slave, and will just be able to walk out of there. But they get Tiny again. After he makes a the top rotation that doesn't come out successful, he moves mid, gets caught too. So painful start for the side of Aster, at least on the Tiny, of course. The Doom having an excellent game, Monet having a pretty decent game, but 
gonna slow down this blink a lot. I mean, last game he almost in two minutes, in a minute and a half or so, he had blink. He is 2,000 gold away. Yeah, this is uh, much more what XG were hoping for. Timber Chain pulls nice. him long range, and that does mean indeed the PQ is gonna go down. And this is very nice for them. So some extra pressure onto the tower uh, in a second here by taking that disruptor out of the lane. And yeah, you see the, you see the item build queued up for JT, the Kaya San. She's having an excellent time. He's gonna be pretty much level eight. And he will be able to push this tower naturally. And on the side of Aster, they can't actually go for a push themselves. As we mentioned, you know, they're, it's going to take them forever to really go for any of those type of push. So I believe you're going to craft. Ooh, Bobaka. He's got Chakram. Stealing. It's a big one. Pulls him back into it. Is it enough for the kill? Not quite. Throws back Chakram the other way now from JT. And this is the double support combo that's so hard to deal with. They move on in. Find Monet Illusions. Q. Playing around with JT a bit there. DY the one that's interrupting. And... It looks like he is going to be the sacrificial lamb as they glimpse him back in and does end up falling there to Bobka. Almost. I was going to say the Hellbear might actually clap and steal the kill there. That was pretty close, but he did get the finish off. And now bottom, there's also pressure from Ghost. Even though they do lose something up top, there is always going to be something to get out of it. So, All right. Yeah, all three cores from Extreme having a very good time. Doom is behind all of them, but is getting close to that Midas. He's got it done. It's coming on Courier now. That is uh, going to be a bit of his catch-up potential. But likewise, it does mean with no blink soon on the horizon, uh, XXS is not really going to be able to be that tempo setter. It's going to still rely a lot on that Tiny and him getting that blink dagger. Yeah, it's, I think most of this game is going to be determined on how much success the Tiny and the two supports really have to make these rotations to start slowing things down. XG, they've gotten away with this early game beautifully, and now they can start actually perhaps looking to shrink the map a little bit, making rotations, going to top, take that tower, and then maybe even look to play around mid. Uh, around mid. But Aster, they're actually going to look to make a heads-up move. They have uh, XXS who's saving a skill point, perhaps for the Doom if he needs to, and they're both rotating down. Radiant and Ghost, does he sense that this is coming their way? Radiant are scanning up on the top lane. He looks aware. Yeah. He looks very aware. Yeah, he's back behind the tower. He's got true form skilled up now, too. Just Obica. put a foot in it. Moves in. Finds him with that. Wait, misses the earth spike, but the hex is there. And hook shot from downtown. So Bobica doesn't have an easy way to get out of there. Great moves from the supports. XG. Really crisp early game. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, look at look at the rotation, the disruptor and the tiny. They want to look for something down here, but yeah, as as we said, the yeah, ghost is gone already. Mm -hmm. And now they're pinging mid. So onto the next tower. We'll probably see JT maybe look to rotate and come behind there too. Who I believe has a oh, is that a full a full Kaya for the timber too? So explosive Whoa. damage. Ghost moving in. They're gonna pop the glyph. They get vision on the Rubik. They know he's there. Paparazzi ready to move in, but not quite on time with the LSA. It's a big steal whenever you have LSA. Now Rubik can solo defend these towers for the most part. Just double blast them and there's gonna be no creep wave. Well, and that's the thing that was interesting is uh, it feels like Paparazzi thinks he has to go for this still magic damage build against the, the Naga Siren. It does give away another potential uh, opportunity to kill off these heroes with we, the, uh, the Rubik. We haven't seen fully yet, right? I mean, he does have the max Dragon Slay, but we haven't seen the full determine of what build, because he's got BKB queued, right. so we'll see how what he does. Still hasn't given up fully, but yeah, it does end up giving away the trouble, you know, the max dragon slip constantly with the Rubik, which will make the Boca happy. Mm -hmm. And actually still very split up right now on Extreme. It looks like they're waiting for that next item before they really take a, an aggressive stance, maybe BKB on Lina or, you know, whatever it is that Ghost is queuing up next for his old bear. They definitely want to keep tempo going. Glyph on top. Jace got him caught for the moment. Is it enough? XWY throws out that avalanche, but a couple more punches coming from Paparazzi is down low. Oh. Barely going to get clipped by that at the end. What a shot. Nice play from JT. Yeah, Boots of Travel, they're setting up these plays. I like, they have to, I want them to keep playing fast like this with this type of draft. Looking to pressure towers when they get any type of kill. This is really nice moves from Extreme. Yeah, I mean, I was looking away for a second to see what it was that they're waiting for, and immediately they run at him again. So literally nothing is what they're waiting for. UAW glimpsed back. I thought maybe there was a chance that the Rubik could have sniped him, but didn't end up happening. Huge. Is that almost...
Okay, not almost the Deso. Actually, yeah, pretty close to Deso. Yeah, yeah, 600 gold or so, and he's going to have it finished up. That's going to allow them to open up Roshan, too, once they start getting this type of space. Since they, get, since they got top tower, mid tower also, they have tons of information. Once they have Deso, plus BK, Deso on Lone Druid, BKB on Lina, I think they can walk into that pit. I'm getting closer and closer to this. Sanjin Kaya being completed for JT. Yep. He's a little low right now next to XWY. With a lot of heroes in the area, yeah, and JT, you can see being very careful about playing against this disruptor. If there was any chance he maybe gets glimpsed there, it could be really scary. Mm -hmm. Power rune. Aster not even checking them at the moment. Looks like they're just really trying to emphasize. We need Tiny Blink before we can actually do anything. So XWY, he's looking to finish that. And XG, getting this lead built up a bit more and more. DY down here bottom next to XXS, who has been left completely alone. He's huge. I mean, he is going to be top net worth probably for the most part of this game until they, if, if Extreme is able to actually bully him at all. It almost has BKB done. Yeah, it feels like this is very much a, uh, a known quantity that they're giving up. Mm -hmm. um, and him getting towards BKB, uh, at least it'll keep him alive against the initiations, but still... Uh, trying to make that sort of aggressive play themselves is going to have to wait for his Blink Dagger. Yeah, him or the Tiny. They'll have a timing at least around that. Oh, he switched it up. Whoa. JT. I, I mean, we mentioned he had this. Okay. Kai Assange kind of gone going in. He's going for the mech for more team fight for his team. I, I actually kind of like this transition. And into Greaves. Very cool. I like it. And up. Do they go just straight for this Roche? They might just try for it with that Deso. I mean, that's really neat, because now you've got, like, other ways to sort of sustain the team, keep them alive while this fight's going on. Ah, the scan is going to connect illusions. on illusions. Uh. Monet's on the low ground. UIW drops down a ward, maybe? No, not going to do it. We'll see if they go into the pit now. Aster did already scan it out. But yeah, they're going to probably walk right into that one. And Paparazzi, we did see, he is kind of going for right-click build. I mean, he took the, the damage down. He's got BKB queued. Could still slightly transition, but I think we're going to probably just see him go for right-click. And Roche, right. they can't make it in time. It's interesting, though, because I feel like a lot of times when I saw the uh, Lena build, it was the LSA max, not the, the Dragon Slave. But maybe I'm just crazy. Regardless, Roche starts to fall, and... Give it a paparazzi. And now the jump mid. Hook shot in. They've got Glimpse ready for him. Drops down the Static Storm. That's going to be Lion. Very low, but not all the way dead. And does finally get brought down. A double kill from the Disruptor off of the initiation. Root onto Doom. Still hanging onto that BKB. So that was not the Glimpse. fight they were hoping for. And in fact, now Ghost, he's caught somewhat alone here. But after the true form, they don't feel confident. Oh, they get on Alina. BKB not there. That's Aegis already done. It's on the courier. It's right next to him right now. Ready to go in for this one if they want, but Doom is also ready. Ghost chasing XXS. He gets Doom on to JT. They're losing absolutely everybody. And uh, PQ, oh he is the one that finally goes down, but you've lost so many heroes on the side of XG. It's not the way to take the Aegis fight. A great recognition by Aster. Look, I mean, they were just constantly poking and then resetting and poking and resetting. Great play for Master there. Yeah, not often you see the Naga Siren do that much damage at this early point in the fight. Has that Orchid done already? Let's take a look at the replay here. They guess they took out, what, I think both of the supports right away, right? So the fight becomes a little awkward for XG to actually do much of anything. Their heroes can't catch anybody once they lose those two. They're just kind of walking into these fights. So great play for Master. Good recognition by them to know that they can still look for these fights. And yeah, it was right before the BKB Lena comes out for the initial go. Could have made all the difference in the world. And of course, if Lena is out of there, uh, I mean, and sort of under control at this point, JT is a very easy Doom target to go for. Yeah. And just to go back to... Actually, we're going to wait a second. This top, they might look for Ghost. But... Yeah, they will find him. Okay. They're still chasing here. No, they're not going for it. No. The supports, DY, they'll find a D ward right away. But, um... The Lina thing that you're talking about, the Lina from safe lane, you want to max light strike rate because you get the cooldown. You only need one point in Dragon Slave because it's nine seconds at all levels. Then you just stat it up. So right. from mid and safe lane, there's a little bit of difference in the right click oriented kind of skill build, but still going to be going for right click. He's just not a maelstrom man. Gotcha. Fair enough. And you can see here, Ghost, you know, obviously not a, a ton of sort of that... Uh, big AOE damage that you sometimes see from these Lone Druids in terms of Radiance or what have you, but the Deso definitely will take down these towers if left alone. 
Yeah, this is the build that, I mean, I want to just give it to, like, Koikfa. I think he was, like, that big lone druid one that just... I think he was one of the first ones that did this. Is Mask of Madness, Desso, you always push that. That's from a couple years now that most a lot of these players do like to orient the lone druid around now. Mm -hmm. And are they going to go for more? Again, no Aegis at this point, but they might feel confident at least trying to force some people back. We'll see. But Paparazzi, he's showing in the mid lane. So they will reconvene in a moment as down bottom, push out the wave. And Naga Siren, having completed that Manta, this is the moment where I'm, I'm kind of curious with this only like a, a two, 3k gold lead that we've seen. Do you start to get worried at all for extreme if things go bad in a fight? They have to start keeping, they have to keep pressure up. So I like that they were pushing the top and still looking for a little bit more. I think if the game starts to get slow, starts to get stale, Aster starts winning tremendously with their type of draft. This Naga and Doom just really start to become too much to deal with. And yeah, the, I mean, this is where I was, where I think all of us are asking is like the test is the timber and everyone going to be able to end the game before this Doom Naga Siren just start to take over. Right. Well, Greaves are done now. So another defensive option here uh, still can very much get doomed yes. in these fights. Can the rest of those supports also sort of survive through it? Them dying at the very beginning of that last fight was pretty rough. Disruptor, a really solid play there with that Static Storm. And you can see DY just queuing up and bringing out another Bracer right now. Just trying to tank up anything small that they can get. They were pretty poor. I mean, POW does have his Blink at the very least, but no Shard yet on the horizon. So another 900 gold or so. And now Esther, they're on the hunt. Blink Doom, Blink BKB Doom. JT, there's a haste down bottom that he could pick up to join the fight pretty quickly here. But four heroes all together. You see Aster, they're not looking to make like a full jump here. They're playing a bit more of a defes yeah. defensive posture because I'm pretty sure they're, they're saying the same thing. It's like if the game just continues to stale out, Monet is going to start being happier and happier. Uh, you do see on the net worths here, though, a pretty big disparity between the Lena and the Tiny in terms of the, the net worth that they've got. Uh, and that still is a bit of an issue, but Monet can just be all, be all end all like you're talking about. Yeah. And it is still, you know, if he gets the toss back on Alina, right? If Paparazzi yeah. doesn't get BKB, it doesn't matter, right? The difference in net worth might not even matter if he does just change the positioning of this Lena. But definitely a little hard, right? XWY has had a bit of a rougher game, as we expected to, versus that Lena is. Ooh. Get a first finger stack, not bad. And stolen whirling death. Ooh, Ooh, just barely off the mark there. Oh, that would have been a huge one actually to catch. They had the timber to follow up. And so Aster, after Disruptor goes down, do they decide to back away? Like, it seems like Extreme aren't confident going in and trying to sort of put forward a presence on the map over the river until that second row shit looks like. Yeah, I would imagine the same thing. Just still. I, it's still scary always versus this Doom. You overextend once or twice his lead. You know, if you lose that fight, it's just going to accelerate that much faster, him and the Naga. But look at Monet. Moves on in here. Getting, Getting big. full vision. It uh, can very quickly go south and feel very oppressive with uh, Monet's movements. He's trying to get in towards that heart. He's getting really far. He's finally overtaken that top net worth spot. And a Hex. That's oh. a good one. Bovica. Good save and stolen Hex. I feel like this DPC is the first time I see that shard just utilized at its absolute best. Like, yeah. I mean, Rubik, as we, I think we talked about, is like eight, eight games, 80-something percent win rate, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. I think this shard is something that people weren't using that much before, but now it's just been constant. Well, it feels like that's a, that's a planned move in a way almost, right? Yeah. It's like, I'm going to go check Rune. If they jump on me, you save me. And it feels very... Uh, that people are playing around it more. Yeah, feels great. I mean, Ruby just feels really good. That's it's crazy how like these small like base damage buff makes heroes. <laughs> right, totally feel more viable again. And between the two of them, Rubik and Tiny, they actually have a full core. Mm. <laughs> Still Radiant holding Oscar. on as a four, a unit of four. Aster not really capable of of making the farm happen for themselves that much on those other heroes, but Monet keeps it. Up definitely on this Naga Siren. He's and the one that matters. Him, him, as long as he's farming, and XXS is using Devour and Minus off cooldown. They're probably pretty happy. Yeah. PYW is getting close to the shard, but still yeah. a little ways away. Yeah, that's you know the, this is the reason the timber and that line's being p been picked. So mm -hmm. we'll start to see that timing pretty soon. Another smoke, yes, sir. 
illusion. Who are they going to look for this time? Send the illusions out up front and center, it looks like. They have Hoof Stomp ready with XXS. Has been able to stay out of these fights. DY, the one that's on there, find him immediately with the stolen Hex, but now Hex on Hex. Or Spike connecting, stun the lift Again. away, and DY goes down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they shard. And they can maybe go for another glimpse. Do they get the vision? He's trying to give it. Ooh, uh. just barely out of range. PYW open to escape, and they can't get him. Scary thing about trying to go for these aggressive plays, too. If you make like yeah. one or two mess ups, a glimpse after glimpse after glimpse can be chaotic. So Roche capable of respawning 40 seconds, a relatively early spawn. And it's going to really depend upon, uh, you know, the map movements now and where Aster decide to position themselves. If they can come and contest this. Because if Extreme get a couple of moments alone, that Roche will fall so quickly. Yeah. I don't know if I think Aster's going to look to contest it for sure, though. I mean, Monet is starting to get to realms of being perhaps almost unkillable. The heart, again, it's done at a very early timing. They do at least, as you know, I was just saying, the, they have this... The Lion, of course, to be able to clear them out. They have the Timber that can do pretty decent, but the rest of the heroes are going to do almost nothing. And the same build going for the Shard next. Yeah, I like it. I, I think it was... I, it's really interesting, because then even if... You can't jump the Naga Siren, and then anyone else you jump just gets healed up and saved even through their BKBs and everything, so... I like it. Yeah, it's a very unique uh, way to play, and feels like uh, something that Monet's been messing around with a bunch. Very, very cool stuff from him. But Illusions will head on into the pit. They see that Roche is indeed up, and the standoff is going to begin. Uh, also hitting 25 minutes, so those uh, those bracers starting to come into a little bit better performance for the, the clockwork. I think he's the only one who has any like bracer or wraith band. So this guy clicked on everybody. I think nobody else has a single bracer or wraith band this team. <laughs> I think this is the first one that we That's see. That's crazy. That. <laughs> Usually it's like two or three wraith bands get purchased up now at this moment and brought out. But not see this, yeah, this is one they're gonna buy. Exactly. That's what has to happen, right? Yeah. Sometimes, especially with Lonedridge too. You look at the inventory; they've got like four wraith bands or something. But AC is finished. High physical damage now. Yeah, if they can get a couple of minutes to just eat away at some people, it'd be really big. And in fact, this wraparound that's coming, XG, who will they scout? Again, they should have the vision advantage when you're playing around with that clockwork, but playing into this ward now, things are going to get pretty spicy here. Two wards set up here for There's Aster. so much. DY immediately throws it out, finds the hook shot. No, not going to connect, but they get the Rubik. Static Storm comes for round two of this. Do they have the damage through it? Bobaka under control, but the silence is there, and the Doom down onto the timber. They're going to try and retreat away with Doom used, and nobody killed yet. It was BKB already popped for Paparazzi. He's, He's going to start to fall in trouble indeed, and the Avatos is there for the kill. No buyback for him. Everybody's dropping lower and lower, though. XXS almost gone. Monet, he's able to live through all of this. It doesn't really matter that much. They buy back on the Disruptor. They can keep this fight going. Ghost Ghost is turning, looking to fight. Has the root. JT turns onto him. The damage over time, and DY is keeping it. him isolated. The jump in, XXS can't save him. Woo! Ghost is too strong. Ultra kill for the bear. Maybe a rampage. Chase on down. 5 PQ, and yes, indeedy duty. The bear man is strong. <laughs> they go for the Rego with the time. I think XWI was TPing out trying to say, like, let's not go back in, but they get baited by Paparazzi, and now Ghost able to get the full cleanup. I think the initial go, they get the uh they get the root, I believe, on JT, and then they try to go like the silence and the doom, but he actually gets the dispel on the root with the greaves. As the doom comes out, he's able to reset positioning. Got so we'll see that in a second over here on the right. So look, he gets netted, gets the greaves, up, like gets the greaves off, and then Doom comes out. So he resets his positioning fully, and they just get to fully like just play around this one with Ghost. Yeah, and getting stuck up there, XWI actually ended up trying to TP out, but then goes in for a second round with that avalanche. Yep. They think that they can go because Paparazzi's dead, but the Lone Druid just does so much damage. Yeah, Ghost was the real problem. Monet, he held his song, and then DY does the best job ever here of getting him inside of the cogs, because otherwise he probably gets the song off and gets out. So we'll see that right there. Yeah, really impressive stuff. And of course, without uh, that song being used, it was all ready to go for Ghost. Good play by DY to get back in there. And again, these types of moments in these games, when you get a big win like that, look at JT, he's always <laughs> so happy. <laughs> he's like, As I, you see, I lived, I got the greaves off. Um, they keep him alive. Yeah. And a 6k gold leave, tower taken mid, the game 
Again, not out of the woods yet for the, the extreme gaming. Aster still looking very strong, uh, but they bought themselves definitely some more time. Yeah, extreme looking at, looking nice now because now it's like the tiny now is making that difference, right? Him being that far behind, it's a lot reliant on Monet who's playing into three big cores. They need to get a bigger doom on the side of Aster if they want to have better success in the next fight. That one was just a doom and a walk away. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of question, I guess, is is Ghost so much of a problem that you have to think about dooming the, the bear? Or does that even, I mean, dooming no. the lone druid? Or does that even, like, it feels like it doesn't do enough. No, you can't, you can't do that. He'll just heal up from his bear hitting people. Uh, tough stuff here for Aster to deal with as Extreme Gaming, after banning out that brood mother and a are given the Lena, <laughs> it actually ends up being the lone druid that's really setting the tempo of this game. Yeah. Had question marks about it, but it's looking excellent. Ghost 8-0 this time around. And JT's Timber too, right? He's 3-1-4, and four, has, done, has done quite a lot. Also has a BKB and level 18 already. And he has Flamethrower, so even more things that he can use to deal with this Naga Siren. It does always get scary when there's that point where, you know, uh, do they have enough damage to deal with her? Avalanche uh, somehow catching him when he's up in the air. DY in trouble. Toss onto the bear. And they find that kill on the clock. Aster would have loved to go for more, but they'll take that one. Feeling a little scared. I think they felt like they were so much stronger because Monet had that heart the last timing, but they had the damage people to pierce through him anyway. Mm -hmm. So now they're being a little more careful. Wonder now as well if we're going to see a switch up. I mean, Doom, I was wondering if Doom was going to go all the way in for the AC so they'd have one of their own. Uh, right now, at least, he's still going for the Octarine core. But game looking tough for Aster. Does this 7K gold lead at this point for you make it feel like extreme or in like a really comfortable position? Or like if they lose a fight, are we swinging back the other direction? Yeah, I feel like they're in a pretty comfortable position because they'll okay. have these. The Lina is going to start getting better and better versus the Naga Siren. Timber is already hit critical mass of being good versus the Naga and the same thing for the Lone Druid. So it does feel like the scaling is going to be there for extreme this time around, even though it did feel like Aster, you know, they're playing that sit back and wait a little bit, let our efficiency our Midas is kick in. We've seen this a lot lately where the the Doom just isn't able to have that type of impact even though he has this farm. Well, XG, step forward here. Going to start to eat away at this tower and even through that Fade Bolt. Can't really do much to stop this one. Tower is almost gone in a matter of seconds. Tower of Lone Druid. Hero still seems good. The yeah. Abyssal Blade coming up soon. Definitely if you can get in the right situation. The ghost is making it look quite marvelous. I love how the bear is called Sun Bear Bear. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, it's the way it goes. And was that an Aghanim Scepter I saw queued up for the lion? Am I crazy? No. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. That was, that, was, like... that was JT's Aghanims. Okay. Yep. They're getting so much out of the map here. Even though you see the gold lead not going up that much, it means a lot because he's playing versus they're playing versus the Doom and the Midas and the Naga. So it does they are still getting so much out of the map and just scaling excellently on their three cores. And the lion is just constantly getting those illusions. So it is preventing Monet from getting too much extra farm or split push. He's uh definitely a thorn in their side and in these fights can become really difficult to deal with too. And Aster you can see they don't feel comfortable at all heading out. I mean, that's the other thing that's kind of crazy about this is, you know, Naga Siren, yeah, very farmed, but look at the levels. Only level 16 on Naga right now. Yeah, these illusion cores, sometimes it gets to be the case. You're constantly just sending illusions to farm, so you're not actually getting that XP yourself. They will buy him a gem, and Aegis will time out. So let's see if Aster thinks that this is a moment where maybe they can get aggressive. They'd love to be able to make something happen here as Lina queuing up and looking to complete pretty soon here a Lincoln Sphere all the way done. So could pass that over to one of her allies or if she wants to. I'd see everybody. They Lord. see absolutely yep. everything. The catch, catch onto both, but where's the rest of the team? They're not quite there in time. Paparazzi walks high ground, pops BKB. Doom Oops. is out immediately onto him. But he's out. Monet trying to run away. JT running down Bobica. Monet hoping to kill off DY, but there are bigger fish to fry and one of them's a bear. JT thinking about chasing XXS. Is it enough for the kill? No, didn't have it. 
Still though, I mean, the Clockwork goes in, gives his life, gets the two supports, and forces quite a lot for Master. The Doom comes out, and Paparazzi just walks away from it. Time and time again, we're seeing it. Does not appear particularly concerned. And now Tower, look at how fast it goes down. Got Rack's gonna drop just as fast. And those illusions just taken away so quickly as the bear hits them. Can they stop this? They can maybe go for an Abba toss back, but they already have the Lincoln Sphere they onto him. It doesn't look like it's gonna be enough to get him out. Ghost in trouble, and Ghost going to die. Do they get glimpses as well? Looking for more. Timber chain, long nice range. <laughs> JT knows how to do that one, but can he get out again? The toss back is there. Silence onto Lion. LSA just barely off the mark, but with those greaves, JT can keep his distance. And now they find Monet, in fact, chasing forward. A clockwork hook a little bit off the mark. Not the Aeon disc. They chase down and trying to kill off XXS. And yes, indeed, they'll kill him too. It's like, yep, you got the Lone Druid, but also remember there's Alina, who's also a monster of a turret. Paparazzi able to hold his ground and just beat on them there. 4,600 damage done. Trying to go for the Timber there also. a Bit of a tough one. He is incredibly tanky this time around. Almost has that Agnes. It's actually coming yeah, out to him does. right now. Yeah, so Monet's game getting harder and harder. And Extreme looking good. You know, it's it's good to see Paparazzi come back to form after all the struggles that he's had in the first three series that or three games that we've seen him in. Mm -hmm. um, looking much better and much more comfortable on this hero. He's always been one of those players that just plays the carry role out of uh, whatever role he's in. Mm -hmm. And this time playing mid, making it happen on Lena. But likewise, it's all three cores from it's Extreme. All three. They're so freaking farmed. And they all do, they all deal with now, especially at this point, they all now do deal with the Nagas on all three of those cores very well. well. Roche capable of respawning. We'll see how quick the respawn is. Two minutes. Okay. So a little bit of time there to work through. To the uh, is Paparazzi going to go on the hunt again? I'm trying to think how Aster approaches these fights. Like how they can actually get the proper jumps because they're just, they're, they're too tanky on the three cores. And XG, they're always together. Dude, and they DY. Go in. Good Woo! catch. The stun there. Disruptor ulti comes too late. They're able to pull out one, but the Doom is left behind. Now the chase, the song. I mean, to try and reset the fight, but there's really nothing here for him. DY is a menace this game. <laughs> he is having a hell of a one. Feels like he's getting double, he's getting two person cogs every single time he jumps. Maybe Aster's sticking a little bit together too much, but either way, XG playing this one to perfection this time around. And you can't afford to give up another Rax here. Doom has buyback if they want to use it. Uh, does have Doom available too, so there's a chance that they can make, make something happen there. And in fact, toss back onto one. Doom buys back now. They need to break the Lincolns, try and jump onto somebody. It's a silence there and a glimpse to pull in JT, but he pops the BKB, and that's also XXS's BKB. Oh boy. <laughs> they know immediately. They're like, all right, you buyback, see you later. Economical damage done. Back to farming it up, back to picking up. I mean, everybody has what? 2,000 gold or so on the side of XG to finish up an item. Normally, death by a thousand cuts comes from Naga Siren. This way, he's going the other direction. Mm -hmm. Every little bit of it's annoying. And PYW is like, oh, please, illusions. Thank you very much. More and more gold. He also, in the middle of the fights, did you see what he's doing too? Because he has the mana drain, uh, mana drain restores allies. Oh. He's just walking up and using that on his teammates. So he's BKB'd in the middle of the fights as well, even though he doesn't see any enemies. That's I like awesome. It. Yeah, I love when I see lines doing that. And it's great for JT. I mean, that's one of the big problems this hero can sometimes run into is so much mana being spammed. Yep. So very cool. 19 to 13. And. This 13,000 gold lead doesn't really feel like it tells the whole story of uh, how much of a dominant position it feels like XG are in. So yeah. they're going to head on into the pit, take down Roshan, and yeah, the Pent Edge Sword. <laughs> it's got everything gone. that they could want. And a full refresh. Ooh. Give it a DY. Give DY that refresher shard. He's earned it. <laughs> nah, that's fine. Man. It's fine on whomever. I feel like this is just PYW going to pass it over to Lena. You eventually. probably should give it a paparazzi. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. But we'll see. You know, if he waits until Paparazzi needs it after the Aegis, then, it, you know, you don't have to worry about the backpacking. Yep. Could also just not be holding a fa Falcon Blade at the moment on the Lina just to have that. But, yeah, it's, I mean, we'll fair. see what they end up doing. It's, it's not like they need to nitpick so much in this one with this this type of lead right now. As Glyph's still on cooldown, looking to knock on the door again. 
MKB. <laughs> yeah, paparazzi's huge. Yeah, so Trickster Cloak, I believe, was just picked up for Monet, so a little bit of evasion. Yeah, no longer. There's now that MKB. They just need damage. Monet at least has gotten towards a Scotty, so he's still been able to develop his uh, gold advantage to some degree, but will it be enough to right-click down these big tanky cores and heroes that are hard to stick onto? That's feeling pretty rough for him. It's feeling like it's him versus the world, really, since his, his Doom having to buy back has fallen significantly behind, and as we mentioned multiple times, XWY, he's been having a much bigger struggle this time. Cutting some waves or some couriers here. Doo -doo -doo. Doing what he can. Maybe he goes takes the tower. I don't know. Nah, he's just got to get back. With that MKB in hand. XG. Ready to go. Master. Fully reliant on tossback plays. It feels like here. Full vision. A CXWY ready for a moment. PYW jumps in. BKB immediate response. XWY is in no man's land. They have vision on him. Oh a couple more punches. He gets out of range of the sentry. Monet's in. Uh, right on top of Ghost trying to kill him off. The disruptor ulti is there too, but XXS starting to die to the Lena. They keep him alive long enough, and actually the Doom is there onto the lone druid. Don't know if it's going to be enough to bring him He's down. Healing. XWY is starting to fall. The bear keeping his lone druid friend alive. And just like that, the entire fight has gone poorly. Maybe they can kill DY. He's the one that goes down, but buys back immediately. Second support potentially going down here. PYW gets punched, gets pummeled. He will fall. JT, though, shows up saying, how dare you go after my support? And with this song, I think it's going to be their swan song as Aster don't really have an answer for this. Don't toss. Go for the bear. Toss, toss. LSA, maybe a lift, a net, kill the bear. TY gives his life for it. He's going to maybe fall here again. The clockwork trying to get out of there. He's alive. He's trying to escape. They pass over the Lincolns onto him. Aster hoping for any type of a play here to keep these buildings alive. They're trying to stop this bear on the resummit, but Ghost, he's not going to. Actually, it might not even be that. They have the cheese over. Monet turned upon. They kill Monet. off another disruptor uh -oh. there, but Monet, there was never a chance. Paparazzi starts beating into him. They buy back now onto both. Going to smoke forward, try and do what they can. Paparazzi too strong. Monet turns now onto JT, but the fear comes out from the lone druid. And, well, with eyes on the prize, Ghost going to try and take down these buildings. Paparazzi lifted, starting to get put into the Swiss cheese grinder. Growing lower and lower. JT's actually stuck over in the trees, too. Maybe they can. They kill a paparazzi, but Lone Druid hitting the building, hitting the Ancient. Can they stop this guy? It doesn't look like it. Paparazzi and him are going to pair together to bring down the Ancient, and this one's going to a game three. All right. It looks like I looks like it worked. I know a couple of us are maybe doubting the Timber, the Lion, and even the Lone Druid, but the switch up works. Putting, putting this Lena mid, having that excellent mid matchup versus Tiny, and then that Lone Druid.